I want to be right with Elohim. I want a better relationship with him. So why can't I stop sinning? That is a question that many people today struggle with. Why can't they stop sinning? If you struggle with this question, you are not alone. It sometimes may feel this way though. This question can sometimes make you doubt your faith, wondering whether you really truly believe, or can make you feel isolated because everyone else around you seems perfect, as if it's only you that is like this. Or maybe you're the opposite, and everyone around you are complete sinners, and when you compare yourself with them, you feel that you're good to go, because you're not as bad as the many others. Again, you are not the only one like this. We all struggle with sin. There are always areas of opportunity for us all to strengthen ourselves in. No one is perfect. Now this is why we have repentance and the gift of grace given by Yahshua who died for our sins. So that as long as we believe in him, he will be our advocate to the Father and we will be saved. But for so many of us, there is consistent fear that our sins will keep us from him and for many, that feeling is correct. The reason that's correct is because though we are believers and are in his church, we are also attached to the world and our faith has become lukewarm. Lukewarm being a mixture between being hot and cold. Hot is being on fire for Yahshua and cold is being of the world and its ways. Revelation chapter 3 verse 16 says that because we are neither cold or hot, he will spew us out of his mouth. That is what we do not want. But the concern for many is that even though they know this will happen, and this is what he says, why do they keep sinning? These are the last days, and it is the goal of this ministry to prepare the church for their bridegroom, Yahshua. Meaning that I want all believers in Yahshua to be ready for him whenever he comes for us. I want us all to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb spoken about in Revelation chapter 19. So it is my desire to assist you with this question of why you can't stop sinning. Let's talk about it. Let's begin. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. The main reason you can't stop sinning is that you haven't made Elohim and his will the priority. Don't get me wrong. You love him. You believe in Yahshua. I'm not taking any of that away from you. If that wasn't the case, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. But it still doesn't change the fact that you have made Elohim the number one priority in your life. You have not completely surrendered to him, and because you have not done this, all the other factors that I will discuss after this are allowed to wreak havoc in your life and keep you in sin. So the first thing you need to tell yourself is that you will make Elohim the priority in your life. You will surrender to his will. You will make pleasing him the most important thing over everything else. You will not be double-minded, meaning that you say you love Elohim, but you still continue to keep idols and not make him the priority. That's being double-minded. You say one thing, but you do another. James chapter 1 verse 8 says that a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. And if you're honest with yourself, you'll see that this is the issue. You are double-minded, which makes you unstable in your ways, which leads you asking the question, why do you keep sinning? So make Elohim the priority. But maybe you're saying, I make it sound easier than it really is. How do I actually do this? Maybe you believe because you go to church every Sunday and pay your tithes, you're doing just that, making him the priority. This is not true. It's not about church attendance or paying tithes. It's about your heart. Whose will is more important? The will of Elohim or your will, your parents' desires, your children's desires, or the desires that the world system has set in place for you? It needs to be Elohim's desire for you. What does he want for your life? Stay away from those churches that tell you that his desire for you is to be successful in the world. Even if he provides for that, it's only so that you can use those blessings to promote his kingdom in a great way. He did not have his disciples in early church persecuted just so you can obtain riches in a satanic world system. Stay away from churches and pastors that promote this to you. But I digress. You must submit to his will for your life. And that doesn't mean things will be without challenge. But it does mean he will give you peace through whatever comes your way. Also, what you want to do is consistently read his word. How many of us read or watch the news, scroll through social media, focus on our projects and tasks at work consistently more than we spend in his word? The devil has placed massive distractions in our paths so that we can spend more time in the world than we do in a relationship with our father. 
you must recognize this and not allow him to defeat you in this way. Commit yourself to reading your Bible every day, at least a chapter per day. This will help build your relationship with him. The next thing you must engage in is fasting and prayer. Now, fasting is a subject that needs to be discussed on its own. Fasting and prayer is a true faith builder because you're placing your needs in Elohim's hands. When you have placed your need for energy and sustenance in the hands of the Father over eating, you will gain strength in your faith and it will teach you to rely upon him only because you will see that he is the only one that can provide you with true strength. A strong prayer life is necessary in your communication with him. He wants you to speak with him. He does hear your prayers. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to Elohim. Mark chapter 11 verse 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And Yahshua told Peter in Matthew chapter 26 verse 41, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We need to pray. You need to make prayer something you do at all times. I speak with the Father all day. Throughout the day, I thank him, ask him for guidance. Listen to what he places on my heart. I pray for protection. I have a relationship with him, and this comes from doing these things consistently. So I want you to focus on them. Submitting to his will. Read the Bible every day, at least a chapter per day. Fasting. Prayer. By doing these things, you will begin to draw near to him, and he will draw near to you, and you will start to see sinful desires you once had go away. Now, all of that is important, but let me help you with some other advice as well. First off, you must understand that this is not you doing this on your own. Something that we do is place ourselves in too high of an importance. We believe it's us when we stop sitting and us removing sin out of our lives. Now, don't get me wrong. We have a part to play in it all. If we aren't resisting the devil and desiring a stronger relationship with Elohim, then we are not allowing the father to work through us but we have to give it all to him to take care of. We must trust that he will do it and follow through with his direction that he leads us in. Let me give you an example. I used to smoke a lot of marijuana, a lot, at least a blunt a day. Even as saved, this did not bother me because I felt it was natural and it came from the earth and Elohim made it for us. And whether my feelings are correct or not, I did not like that I was dependent on it. I wasn't able to do most things without smoking first. I couldn't read books without smoking. I couldn't go out with my family without smoking. I couldn't do anything without smoking first. It relaxed me. I was dependent on it to relax me. And I didn't like that I was dependent upon it. And then on top of it, I began to believe that it was a stumbling block for others. But how could I stop smoking? It was something I did for more than half of my life. Every time I tried on my own, I failed. I gave it to the father and asked for his help. I asked if this is something that is not pleasing to him, please remove the desire from me because I can't do it on my own. All I can tell you is that one day I woke up and the normal desire I had to smoke was not there at all and it never came back. I knew it was him because I tried many times before and I always had the desire but just practiced self-control and restraining myself from it. But this time I did not need restraint because I didn't have the desire any longer. Even when I went around others that did it, I was able to say no and watch them do it. At that time, I knew it was him that took it from me. I gave it to him and he worked through me, but I had to work as well. I stopped hanging around those same people that I associated with smoking. I built my dependency on him, replacing the marijuana with him. He worked in me and I worked so that I did not fall back into the same trap again. This testimony goes for everything else. He did this for me in other things, like the way I looked at women and lust. My point is that you must give him what you struggle with and allow him to work in you. Placing the burden on yourself will only bring temporary results. You must allow him to work through you and sincerely mean it. You can't pray for him to take something away that you really don't want him to take from you. It will not work. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But Elohim is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. And Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 says, He who covers his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So you see what these verses are telling you? You must repent from your sin and allow him to cleanse you and give you a way of escape. Okay, so I think that should make some sense. But let me also tell you some things that you must do. The next part of this advice comes down to your diet. And I am not talking about actual food. Everyone knows the expression, you are what you eat. This is very true. If I say I want to lose weight and be healthier, the first thing anyone will tell me to do is I need to watch what I eat. I need to take in more healthy foods and really eliminate the bad ones from my diet. I always use this analogy that you can't lose weight if you're eating McDonald's every day. You probably actually just gain more weight. But this is true with everything else. You want to stop lusting? Close your eyes and ears off from entertainment that promotes it. You want to stop cursing? Stop listening to things that are cursing. You want to make Elohim more of the priority? Stop hanging around friends that are always making him a last thought. Basically, you need to remove yourself away from all influences that promote unrighteousness to you. I used to cuss a whole lot, like those words were just a part of my vocab. But when I got married and had children, I wanted to be a better example for them. So I stopped cussing. I believe I prayed about this too, but I can't say for sure. What I do remember is that I stopped listening to things that had cuss words in them. That was with all my music. I was still listening to 50 Cent and Jay-Z, but I would get the clean versions. I cleansed my ears from those words. After a time of not hearing it and removing the normalcy and tolerance of the words, later, when I began to hear the words, they were piercing. When I heard them, it felt like someone was stabbing me with words. This can be done with everything. Let me first tell you that this is the reason for our entertainment today. Entertainment today is not created only with the motive that entices us to sin. I mean, this is true. It does do this. But for the most part, the things we see in movies and hear in our music, we don't actually do. What is actually happening, though, is that these things are raising our tolerance of sin. So much so that we have a generation that doesn't see immorality as immoral. It's because their tolerance to sin is at an extremely unhealthy high. Again, it's not that they will do everything they hear, but it's just not that big of a deal. I have teenage sons, and as I try to teach them the ways of this world, a lot of it, they used to think that I was just overthinking. That is not really that big of a deal. It's again because their tolerance to sin is at an extremely high level. If you research the history of television over the past 50 years, a married couple in the bed, fully clothed, was at a point in time pushing the limits. To now, they are having full-out sex on television. Or in our music. Marvin Gaye to many was not to be listened to. But today, his songs would be rated PG compared to what they are saying today. You see, over time, we have been given immorality in dosages that have been gradually increased. So now we are at a time where everything goes and the only thing that does not go is the person who speaks out against it. They look at those people as being crazy. My point is, if you want to stop sinning, you must remove yourself from all things that are suggesting it to you. You need to do a purge of your music. This was my first step. I got rid of all content that suggested immorality to me. I'm a New Yorker that grew up on Biggie, Jay-Z, and Nas, and Dancehall. All of that had to go. I will have to speak on that in a topic on its own, because understand that that music was made to promote immorality to our generation and speak against Elohim and Yahshua in ways that were blasphemous. It all had to go. Now, I love music, so this was difficult for me, and it will be for you, but it has to go. Now, many people my age will ask, what about 90s R&B? I mean, I still listen to some R&B love songs because there's nothing wrong with love, but I listen to all lyrics very strongly. Don't ever listen to music just because of the beat and melody and not pay attention to the lyrics. When I first started to purge, I stopped listening to it all though, rap and R&B. After I grew strong and my discernment grew and my tolerance of sin drastically dropped, I was more equipped in understanding what was okay for me and what was not. What would be a stumbling block for myself and my kids and what was not. 
but I had to purge first. Glory be to Elohim that he did provide me with replacements. So I recommend artists like Ishan Burgundy, Flame, Selah the Corner. There are artists that allow you to change the content of the music you hear, but the music is still on point. These are the main ones I listen to, but you must be careful because they're artists that like to come under the guise of Christian rap, but are actually promoting new age principles or conformity to the world. Artists like Lecrae and Reach Records. You must be careful of these artists. So with everything that you listen to, you must use discernment. Everything with the label Christian is not truly Christian. Remember that. Now, the same thing goes for your television and movies. You must seriously watch what they are promoting to you. Television is one of the biggest effective weapons used against mankind in history. A majority of the programming is used to implant thoughts and increase our tolerance of wickedness. If you want to be closer with Elohim and stop sinning, you must purge yourself from the entertainment you consume. It's like cheating on your diet. If you're trying to reduce your desires and are seeking more righteousness, you have to develop a bad taste in your mouth for things that you at one point used to like consuming. This is very general because only you know what you consume and take in. Just understand that they have built a system in place that is totally geared to promote sin to you. You can't escape it. I mean, unless you move in a cave somewhere. The only thing you can do is recognize what they're throwing at you and ignore it, and in time, you will become more sensitive to it. Right now, if you're honest with yourself, you may see that you have a high tolerance for the things that Elohim says he hates. Not that you yourself agree with partaking in those things, but if your eyes and ears are not sensitive to it, then your tolerance level is way too high and this will keep you in sin. Watch what you're feeding your eyes and ears. The last thing I will mention is extremely important. It's your friends and family, the people you spend most of your time with. Do your friends have the same desire as you to get closer with Elohim and remove sin out of their lives? If so, then they will help you and having somebody around to hold you accountable sometimes is very beneficial and helpful. But if you do not, and your friends still want to engage in the same sinful behavior, or they have a high tolerance for sin, this will work against you. They will make you weak instead of making you stronger. They won't help you change your mindset, and that's the biggest thing that needs to be changed. You must stop hanging with them until you're stronger and have more self-control. After you stopped hanging with them, you may even realize that you should not have been even hanging with them in the first place. It's not to say that you don't care about them anymore, but no friendship is worth going to hell over. So if you realize that you can't stop sinning, you need to remove yourself from friends that allow you to be weak. Have a conversation with your friends and see if they agree or not. Like I said, if you have someone that supports you, then keep them around. But if they make fun of you or tell you that it's not that serious or make you feel bad, laugh at you, or many other things they do, you must remove them out the picture until you are built up stronger. This goes for family and friends. Just because they're family doesn't mean that they get a license to keep you in sin. You may get the most resistance from family, parents, grandparents, siblings, children, cousins, etc. When I was growing my relationship with Elohim, I went through a period of time where people were exiting my life. I wasn't actually the one removing them, but they were removing themselves. I just didn't chase them. It hurt me in the beginning, but then I realized I was going through a transformation and the only ones that could be around are those that supported it. The others made me weak. You must remove yourself from bad associations, even if it leaves you completely alone. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Remember this, and don't let evil company corrupt you. And this also goes for the places that you go to. Stop going to the club and other places that promote unrighteousness to you. Please note that this can also be your church. We have a church in our area called Church by the Glades, and they literally promote unrighteousness with a Jesus spin. I mean, it's really horrible. They'll play Rihanna right in the middle of praise and worship, totally promoting the world. But these are things that you can do now that will help you stop sinning. 
You need to think of this as a mindset change. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. And that's what you need to do. Renew your mind. You need to take out that garbage and start filling it with righteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 says, We must bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Messiah. You must stop being a babe in Messiah. Too many of us allow ourselves to be infants in our faith for way too long. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 13 and 14 say, For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. At the same time that you are removing the bad out of your life, purging the wicked influences, you must replace that wickedness with righteousness. Start feeding on more spiritual food that will grow you in maturity of your faith. Once this happens, you will really start feeling conviction of the Holy Spirit, and you will truly be transformed. You will be able to discern better good and evil. So, I threw a lot at you. I encourage you to watch this video as many times as you need to reinforce this message. But let me go over the things that you must do again. 1. Make Elohim and His will the priority. Surrender to His will for your life. 2. Read His word daily, at least a chapter per day. 3. Start fasting. Build up your dependency on Elohim. 4. Increase your prayer life. Talk to Him all day. 5. Give Him what you struggle with and allow Him to work in you. 6. Remove yourself away from all influences that promote unrighteousness to you. 7. Change the music you listen to. 8. Change the television and movie programming you watch. Purge out the bad. 9. Reduce your tolerance for sin and increase your intolerance of it. 10. Keep the friends and family that make you stronger in your faith. 11. Remove the friends and family that make you weaker in your faith. 12. Stop going to places that promote unrighteousness to you. 13. Remove the bad out of your life. Purge the wicked influences. 14. Start feeding on more spiritual food that will grow you in maturity of your faith. Stop being a babe in Messiah. All of these things will help you in your walk with Messiah. It will stop the quenching of the Holy Spirit in your life and allow him to move more freely within you. I hope this sincerely helped you. Make this a priority today because time is almost up. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this blessed you, please don't forget to like it and share it. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who contributes to this channel. Your donations really help me and assist me greatly in this ministry. You are a blessing to this ministry and I thank you sincerely. Thank you for the love and support. Thank you for watching everyone. I love you all.